The date is February 19, 2002, in Kargil. It was a time when the relations between India and Pakistan were at an all-time low. Pakistan provoked India to go to war in 1999 and conducted a terrorist attack on India's parliament. Both troops came close to war again in 2001 after the terror attack. The situation was tense on both sides. India's air activity was at an all-time high, conducting air sorties with various aircraft. One routine sortie led by Air Vice Marshal Chafkar quickly transformed into a life-changing event. Out of nowhere, a shoulder-fired missile was unleashed upon their AN-32 aircraft, hitting the right engine. When we were flying uh, uh, near the Kagil, how, when, with whom, what happened and all, we will leave the details, but I'll tell you, a missile was fired upon my head. Oh my God! You know, <sighs> yeah, yeah, you are, you know, you are operating very close to the LOC. It is almost plus minus, you don't know which way, this way. So maybe we, they construed that we have, or maybe, but we were fired upon. Right? My goodness, okay. The Antonov An-32 is a twin-engine turboprop military transport aircraft originally designed in the Soviet Union. It has a distinctive high-wing design and is known for its versatility in various roles including cargo and troop transport, medical evacuation, and more. The missile fired by Pakistani troops was a Stinger missile. It is important to note that the missile was equipped with dual fuses, including both proximity and impact fuses. A proximity fuse is designed to detonate a missile or artillery shell when it comes close to its target, rather than upon direct impact. On the other hand, an impact fuse triggers the detonation of a weapon upon direct contact with the target. The Stinger missile had the potential for utter devastation, yet, destiny intervened, both fuses failed, sparing the aircraft from a catastrophic explosion. Although both fuses of the missile failed to detonate and the missile acted like a projectile, it is not the only reason why the missile was unable to bring down the aircraft. Even today, Cargill poses significant challenges for operating and flying aircraft. Back then, when India lacked sophisticated satellites and navigational aids, coupled with adverse weather conditions and the proximity to the line of control, these factors set the stage for a series of events that would forever change the course of Chafakar's life. Whiteout caused by heavy snowfall, the pilot noticed a discrepancy in the aircraft's position relative to Kagel Town. Realizing the urgency, the pilot took swift action, attempting to correct the course. However, a thud and a cascade of warning lights signaled a different kind of danger. The engine caught on fire. With quick thinking and precise actions, the pilot managed to extinguish the fire by shutting off the fuel supply. AN-32 aircraft has two pumps that supply fuel to the engine, high-pressure pump responsible for delivering fuel to the engine at high power settings. When the aircraft needs more power, this pump ensures that enough fuel is supplied to meet the demand. Low pressure pump is used during idle, starting, and lower power settings. This pump provides fuel to the engine when it requires less power. During a critical situation like a fire, the pilot needs to shut off the fuel supply to the engine. By closing both the high and low pressure pumps, the pilot can stop the flow of fuel, which is crucial to prevent the fire from spreading and causing further damage. The flight engineer confirmed the absence of fire, allowing the pilot to perform the necessary procedures for a single engine operation. So I told, I took the initial actions of uh, extinguishing the right engine fire, but, uh, and sent my flight engineer running behind in the cargo compartment to have a look that uh, the fire is not spreading on the wing. But when he came back, he had a bad news. He said, yes sir, there is a fire and engine and that fuel and oil is spreading on the wing and that is catching fire but till he had gone and did, done this activity i had done the final act of closing the 
लो प्रेशर पंप ऑल्सो हाई प्रेशर पंप आई हेड क्लोज फ्यूल low pressure also i close so now i told him again go back and see back then landing at cargill was deemed extremely difficult with two engines let alone with a single engine compromised by the earlier missile hit flying through designated escape routes hugging the hills and maintaining control in the challenging terrain the pilot navigated towards lay for a single engine landing the seasoned pilot employ a technique called feathering the engine the pilot adjusts the angle of the malfunctioning engine's propeller blades so that it rotates without creating additional drag this reduces the drag on the airplane and makes it more controllable with only one engine running the airplane tends to yaw and roll uncontrollably to counteract the yaw and roll the pilot must use the rudder and ailerons adjusting the controls to maintain straight flight it's physically demanding because the aircraft wants to veer off course and the pilot has to constantly correct its trajectory landing becomes a critical situation Unlike having the option to go around and try another landing with both engines, a single engine situation offers no such luxury. The pilot must commit to the landing, making it a must-land scenario. And flying through mountainous terrain adds an extra layer of complexity. The pilot needs to carefully manage altitude using the available power, all while navigating through challenging landscapes. As the aircraft safely touches down, post-incident investigations unfold. Air Vice Marshal Chafikar describes the scrutiny that followed. Months of probing into the why, how, and who to blame. And there you have it, a profound tale of survival and quick thinking. Air Vice Marshal AC Chafikar's experience serves as a testament to the courage and expertise required in the realm of aviation.